you are taking all of these experiences that you had from your past, all these destructive things that have happened to you, and you're telling yourself, without God, I can control what happens. Thank you for joining us for the Blended Kingdom Families podcast. This podcast is for blended families, the people who love them, and anyone who just wants to improve their marriage and family relationships. BKF exists to break the cycle of divorce, equip marriages, and unite blended families with the truth of God's word. It is our hope that today you will receive biblical guidance and practical resources that will bring unity and peace to create your thriving, healthy home. Let's jump in. Hey guys, welcome back to the BKF Podcast. We are so excited you're here with us today. If you haven't already, I feel like I've said this a thousand times. If you haven't already, please take an opportunity, like, share, comment, subscribe. Yes. Just join our community. Join the community, guys. If you're listening on Audible, just know that the full video format of this podcast is on our YouTube channel. You can go see our faces, hang out with us, see all of our podcasts. Vanessa, today we're continuing the second part of our series on inner vows. If you missed last week, pause this right now, go back and watch it. Mm -hmm. It's super cool. Um, But we're continuing this series on inner vows based on our new book that's coming out in September, Blended and Redeemed. Yes. Um, And we're just going to dive deeper into this topic. We, We really feel like this topic is one we want to talk about more and more. Yeah. And so you guys, um, there's a part in the book and it's titled drinking your own poison. And I love this quote. It's super powerful. It says bitterness is a poison you prepare for someone else and then drink yourself. And that's apt. I think to the description of inner vows, because, and we said this last time, you know, inner vows, when we make, we make inner vows in an attempt to shield ourselves from any pain that someone else has inflicted on us. Um, but it ends up just being a negative, uh, it just ends up being negativity in our lives. This taking Mm -hmm. up room and space in our heart and in our minds. Um, and ultimately it affects our relationships. Yeah, I mean, when we make these inner vows, and I used this illustration last week, but it really is about it's it, you're building a fortress around yourself that you feel is protecting. Yeah. You feel is eliminating the possibility that repeat things happen to you. Mm-hmm. You are taking all of these experiences that you had from your past, all these destructive things that have happened to you, and you're telling yourself, without God, I can control what happens. So I'm not going to do this. Yeah. They are not going to do this. This will never happen to me again because I am going to... You fill in the blank. Right. But we have to understand with walls... They keep bad things out, but they also keep good things out. Right. And we don't have the ability to see beyond what we put up around us. Mm -hmm. And again, Satan wants us to do this. He wants us to feel like everything that is bad that has happened to us is a result of us being weak or us being unprepared. Um, And he wants us to continue that path. Mm -hmm. But that is not what God wants. Yeah. And I think, you know, one of the things that we also talk about in the book, it's, um, it's about our scars and how our our, God can take our scars from the past and use those for testimony and for greatness Mm -hmm. and for his glory. Um, but you know, you talk about this in a lot of, uh, when it comes to counseling, you know, when you're counseling people, um, many times without even realizing it, people, have made these inner vows, you know, and that can look like unforgiveness, you guys, that can be pride. It can be, um, inner vows make us one, one thing we're gonna talk about here in a minute, irrational and unteachable. So there's so many ways that they, um, they can hurt us, but God and just his goodness and sovereignty can take those situations and things that we've walked through. And when we can surrender that, yeah. you know, he can take those things and use it for his glory. And so a lot of times, you know, it's just us putting aside the resentment and, you know, the feelings of the things that we've gone through um, and understanding, you know, that our inner vows are not good for us, that they're toxic and that they can hurt us. Um, but also that when we lay that at the feet of Jesus, yeah, he can take it. And then those things can turn into blessings. Well, and we know the majority of people who are listening to this podcast have experienced divorce. Yeah. And I just want to take a minute to recognize 
the severity of a divorce. Mm -hmm. It is a cut to everything we thought. Yeah. You know, when you get married, you are on a path of this is the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. This is my path. I am open to this. And when a divorce occurs, you mentioned scar. Mm -hmm. It's just, it, it is a knife wound that says, I will never be the same. Yeah. Um, this will carry with me forever. Mm -hmm. um, and it is just something that we have to, I, I do believe we have to recognize the depth of that. Yeah. We have to recognize that if we've gone through this, inner vows are, are part of something you have probably said to yourself. Mm -hmm. So we need to, you know, take record of that. Yeah. And again, if you're listening to this and you've been through those situations, we just want to encourage you, first and foremost, God can handle this mm -hmm. and he understands that about you. Yeah. Uh, and there's ways to heal from that. Yeah. And you guys, I want to move into what inner vows can do because inner vows first, like I said, just a minute ago, they can make us irrational. They can make us unteachable, unteachable. Um, because inner vows, like I said, I said this in the first episode, mm -hmm. um, they're based on feelings, not on facts. Yeah. And when we begin to be ruled and governed by our feelings, you guys, that's a very dangerous place to be. Um, we need to be ruled by what the truth of God's word says, um, by what the Holy spirit is speaking to us. And I want to read in scripture here, and it's in John, and it's 831 through 32. And this right here, it's talking about how the truth will set us free. So this is why it's so important to know God's truth, because if you're trying to combat the lies of the enemy, inner vows, maybe strongholds, yeah, things like that, it says, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciple, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. So we always talk about you know, how important it is to know God's word and to abide in that, meaning, you know, to, to act in that, to have active participation, to be obedient in that. Um, mm. You know, feelings are real, but they're not always true. Just because you feel a certain way doesn't mean that it's true. And that's where we have to go into the Holy Spirit. And we mm. have to ask Holy Spirit in that quiet place and just be like, God, is, is this you or is this my flesh speaking to yeah. me? Yeah. Well, and you mentioned the two words that I, I just want to dive into, irrational and unteachable. Yeah. So let me put this into practical sense of marriage. Have you ever been in a conversation with your spouse and you're talking about a subject and all of a sudden it goes from like DEFCON 5 to <laughs> DEFCON 1? This is a War Games, the movie War Games, uh, you know. But anyway, that means bad. So yeah. all of a sudden you've gone from like this normal, pleasant conversation to Boom, you're yelling at each other. Yeah. Something that was completely simplistic, so to speak, mm -hmm. turns into this huge issue. Maybe it's finances. You know, I can see this happening with couples where all of a sudden they're kind of like, okay, who should manage the money and how should we do bank accounts? Yeah. And then all of a sudden it turns into, you can't do this. I want to do it all my way. My money stays separate. And all of a sudden, this what what was supposed to be a normal conversation turns mm -hmm. into really ir an irrational topic right. where both people are like, whoa. And we're going to talk about mm -hmm. landmines a little bit later, but that's what that is. It's a landmine. It's, it's something that br was brought up from the past, and all of a sudden, you become unteachable to maybe a concept of marriage that mm -hmm. can work because you've had such trauma in your past yeah. with maybe it's finances, maybe it's intimacy, all of these things that can be brought up. But irrational becomes one of those things, and I just want to spell it out. It's where I don't understand the reaction. Yeah. I don't understand why this happened. Yeah. It was an irrational conversation. Well, and we talked about this before in our last series, but we talked a lot about pride. And pride tells us that pride definitely takes a role in inner vows. Um, as well, because it pride makes us unteachable. Yeah. We're we're too prideful, um, you know, to either admit we're wrong or to maybe seek help or you know I've got this. I don't need help. You know, uh, type of mindset. But um, uh, pride tells us that we're justified and we're right in our judgment. And so again, you guys, pride is a big, big. Um, it's a big, and it says in scripture, it, you know, pride goes before destruction. Yeah. And so it's very destructive. When we become unteachable, we also cut, cut ourselves off from the, uh, from the wisdom and from the knowledge and from the real solution, which is God. Yeah. Well, and we've talked to a lot of blended families and I just kind of want to highlight this one. Um, 
because we talk about pride, we talk about inner vows. How many times have we sat with couples and we talk about anytime their ex spouse is brought up, there is just this righteous anger that is yeah. brought with it. Mm-hmm. And we know that people can do bad things. Yeah. We know that people can hurt you. Mm-hmm. And in that divorce scenario, which I talked about just a minute ago, divorce is such that that broken promise of divorce is so deep that we can make these inner vows about our spouse that we will never forgive them. Yeah. You know, you know, we talk about forgiveness a lot. Yeah. As you wrap in unforgiveness and an inner vow, mm-hmm. righteous indignation, you know, or you want justice for you and the way you feel. It's not what they deserve. It's just what you feel, like you said. It's a feeling. It's not a fact. It's just a feeling. Yeah. So just to reiterate, point one, inner vows make us, you know, um, irrational and unteachable. Inner vows, point two, make us unforgiving. Yeah. And so I love that you mentioned that, um, Scott, because unforgiveness, you guys cannot exist in the kingdom of God. Unforgiveness is a sin. And unforgiveness will keep you so bound to whatever it is, that resentment, that anger, um, you guys, it is such a poison. And I think of like the tree canopy, um, example where underneath the roots, they say, you know, spread further than the canopy of the tree, but how those roots of bitterness and unforgiveness will begin to spread into every area of your life where it then is affecting your marriage. It's affecting your children, you know, and maybe it it is unforgiveness of your ex-spouse, but how is that then translating into your marriage, into your family, into your work life, into your spiritual life. Yeah. Um, This is a quote from the book, and I just, I was just reading it as I was preparing to say it, but I just, the gravity of it is, imagine if Jesus looked at us the way we look at our ex. Our crimes against Jesus far outweigh what our ex has done to you or to me, and would carry much greater penalty if he didn't forgive us. Mm -hmm. That weight... As a Christian, we see what Jesus did for us. Mm-hmm. We see what he modeled for us. Mm-hmm. But understand that pulling that back into your life, yeah. pulling that back into what you're going to do, yeah. pulling the power of Satan away from him and putting it on the cross and saying, I understand forgiveness. I am going mm-hmm. to grant forgiveness. I understand what an inner vow is, and I'm going to seek biblical guidance to understand what those inner vows are. That is what Jesus wants us to do. Yeah. Yeah. There's not one person uh, that you look at that God doesn't love, and that's including your ex-spouse. And so you guys, um, inter- unforgiveness is potentially, I think, the worst inner vow any of us could ever make. Yeah. So, uh, you know, well, it's bondage. Yeah. When we choose not to forgive somebody, we, we live with chains on us. It steals your joy. It's it's the very thing that the enemy, it's leaving the door open for the enemy to come in, steal your joy, steal your peace, steal your, um, you know, your mind, your thoughts, and just yeah. run with it. Yeah. Well, and these are heavy topics, guys, and yeah. I, I'm just trying to lighten the mood a little bit because, man, we just like dive deep in here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I hope you understand the gravity of what we're talking about, because ultimately what we're doing is we're trying to encourage you to live your marriage and your family in this way that is not bound with chains, that is not bound by guilt, Mm -hmm. or that is associated with all of these inner vow rules Mm -hmm. that really hold your marriage and your family back from the blessings that God has in store for you. Um, Well, it's it's John 10. I think when you say that, I think of John 10, 10. It's the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that you may have life and have it abundantly. And again, it's stealing the joy, the peace. It's, you know, killing your relationship, relationships. That's what inner vows do. That's what unforgiveness does. And so you're absolutely right. It's so important that we work through that and that we find uh, reconciliation, that we find forgiveness. Well, and it's also important that you understand that the pathway may not be you may not know what you don't know. Yeah. So if if you're having these conversations today or tomorrow with your spouse and talking about inner vows, please lay out the groundwork for the fact that yeah. there could be landmines. And we talked about this, this landmine scenario where you're walking in a field with landmines just throughout, and your goal is to get to the other side. Mm-hmm. But understand that 
inner vows are like landmines. They're just kind of hidden. Third point. In different places. Inner vows create landmines. Yes. Yes, they do. Yes. Uh, and we see them, you know, even eight years into our marriage, we will we will point at something. Uh, and I think it's funny in marriage, it, you, you get to the point where you can poke and yeah. you see and you're like, don't poke there again. Mm-hmm. And you just kind of avoid that. Yeah. You just say, well, you know what? I'm not going to talk about that because last mm-hmm. time it didn't get quite the reaction and I could see where it was going to go. So, well, yeah, yeah. I think, uh, you know, the other day, and I can't remember exactly what we were talking about, but you said something and, and my response was, well, did you ask God about that? Yeah. And it, you, your look was like, I know you're right, but I am not going to answer you right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, uh, you, cause you make these rules and, and, and yeah. rules and inner vows kind of go hand in hand. You may call them a rule to kind of feel better about it. Sure. Uh, and your spouse gives you, uh, or God gives you a spouse so that they can point out things in you. Um, this is funny. <laughs> That's just funny. When you point out something about your spouse and they don't respond correctly, uh, just know that, you know, just try again. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you, you walk through this landmine and it could be as, as, as innocent as, you know, you're going to a restaurant or, you know, you do something and your spouse just kind of negatively reacts, Mm -hmm. you know, again, these need to be ongoing conversations that you're having, Mm -hmm. um, every single, you know, as much as you can about that. Yeah. I, you know, and I think another good example of landmines, especially in blended families, like maybe when it comes to disciplining the child, you know, maybe you were in a relationship, your previous marriage where, Maybe there was a lot of verbal abuse to the child, yeah. right? And so then now step parent, say stepdad's coming into the situation, yeah. and is now maybe using a tone that's not verbally abusive, but it's a it's a yeah, it's a know, trigger. It's a trigger. Yeah. And then now you know, as the step parent, you're like, I I was just disciplining him, and, yeah. and maybe it was well deserved discipline, but because the mom experienced that and the child experienced that, then it becomes, like you said, Scott, a trigger point and it becomes this irrational, explosive reaction. Yeah. Um, And again, it's like, okay, that shouldn't have caused that type of reaction. What's going on? What's the underlying thing behind why, you know, it was, you reacted in that way? Well, and, and what I would say to that is you're absolutely right. It doesn't have to be the whole event Mm -hmm. to make, uh, to trigger this inner vow. Yeah. It can be just the hint of the start mm-hmm. because as, as humans, we understand, you know, uh, kind of the behavior cycle. So we see one thing happen and we kind of, we've seen what, what, what will continue to happen. Yeah. So all we need to see is the first step. Mm-hmm. All we need to see is the first tone. All we need to see is the first opportunity where you think that maybe there's a hidden secret yeah. or you think that because they're five minutes late, you know, there's something going on there. Mm-hmm. So it's just the first part that creates almost like the the thorn under the nail yeah. that you just don't get out that just becomes worse and worse and worse. Mm-hmm. Um, and understand that, you know, we talk about biblical counseling a lot and in this phrase kind of sweeping the minefield. Yeah. Uh, the prepare and enrich, I think, is one of the best ones that I have seen just because it really forces you yeah. to dive into all the topics mm-hmm. that you may not talk about on a normal basis or even through normal counseling. Mm-hmm. So it just says, hey, we're going to talk about all of these mm-hmm. and we're going to see if there's a landmine somewhere. Mm-hmm. Um, and and if you, if, you're, if you heard that and you're like, I want to do that, Trust me, all you got to do is go to preparingandenrich.com. I don't work for them. I just like them. But they'll give you a list of counselors in your area that are certified to do that. Go and request that. Yeah. No, that's a good resource. Um, and again, you guys, we just, you know, we just want to, you know, recommend that you go back t- and listen to part one. Next week, we're going to be going into part three, super exciting, um, where it's called cleaning out the storage unit. Everybody so needs to clean their storage you need to unit. Clean out your storage unit every every now and then. So, um, but you guys, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, it's been, you know, so much fun talking yeah. about this and just diving deeper into it. And again, you guys, if you're sitting here listening to this for the first time, you're like, okay, this interval thing is new to me. You know, again, like we said last time, we just encourage you go seek the Holy Spirit about this. Like open up your Bible, you know, read, you know, read the word, get with your spouse, pray and talk about it and just be like, Hey, is there anything that maybe you're noticing or I'm noticing, or is there anything that you can recall as to to maybe an inner vow that you've made and pray through that, talk through that. Yeah. You guys have a wonderful, wonderful day. We will see you next week. Be blessed in all that you do. Take care. 
Hey guys, so glad you were here with us today and I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And you can find more resources from Blended Kingdom Families at blendedkingdomfamilies.com. Join us again next time as we hang out with more amazing podcast guests. And remember, nothing will be impossible with God.